Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope you guys had a relaxing and fun week. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too stressful for you guys. And I hope you guys are all nice and ready to draw a desert scene. So, deserts, they aren't easy in the sense of it's hard to make them seem interesting, dynamic without just doing a flat lane with just some rocks and frogs formations but we are going to make it kind of seem interesting <laughs> so one way I gone about when I do desert scenes is adding more plant life than might seem natural in a um a scene like this just because plants kind of add a bit more of that dynamic because it shows hey this environment is capable of growing and sustaining these plants so it has to be livable at least that's how i view it so i'm doing this diagonal archway to kind of break up the sky space instead of just doing it right next to this rock formation it makes this archway the focal point at least that's the goal. And I don't want to carry all the way to this edge. I want to have this negative space of the sky breaking out on this side as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm looking at a lot of like the reference photos from like Utah and Arizona, the Grand Canyon, seeing how those rocks are functioning inside of that kind of sort of desert. And then to have something close to us. A few cacti. We love cacti. We shall name them. I'm kidding. We don't have to name them. <clears throat> I'll probably make this into a river. So this will be like giving me like an oasis. So. We'll do probably a palm tree. Because we kind of think that'd be a good way to go about it with this one doing like an oasis feel. So I have these palm trees coming here and kind of overlap this big rock formation, which will help as another way of with perspective in it, atmosphere perspective, and help make this rock formation seem further back, as long as with our path of the river. <clears throat> and then we need something. 
kind of like an outline of more affirmations behind it to fill out this world. <coughs> yeah. Like so, and then maybe another little guy just peeking in from here. More. And I'm doing these half cacti, the little bulb, bulb looking guys, instead of, you know, that kind of cacti. Because we already have these palm trees, I don't want. There to be too many tall things going on here, having some more interest in the bottom of the screen to kind of draw the eye around. But having these palm trees kind of leak down to this beer down here. So, yeah. You know. If you want to add those, go for it. It's your little desert landscape. How you see it is how you see it, right? <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so we'll probably do a new type of day. So we're gonna have a nice vibrant blue in the sky. And then do a bit of a gradient. to help lighten up the bottom of the ear. There we go. And clouds. So clouds and noon are gonna be more on pretty much a white and a light blue side of it. And I know deserts, they don't have a lot of clouds. But that would make it so boring in the sky. So we're ignoring that and just adding clouds. I hope you guys are all staying warm because it is so cold outside right now. So, stay warm, stay bubbling up. I know they were saying we we're gonna get snow because there was a big rainstorm that came through but thankfully it wasn't that cold enough for it to start snowing And now the cool part, um, this will be much later when we're doing it, but this big stone structure is going to cast a cool shadow down here. At least that's the goal, is <laughs> to make it look cool. We'll see how well that goes. <clears throat> Alright, those... Back rocks. We're just gonna do a bit of a darker blue because I just want them to be a silhouette because they're gonna be very far. 
because we want the main focus to be this front area. But we just want to give the illusion that there is more surrounding this area. It's not super secluded. It's focused on Berkeley Street. So we'll do some light shading on this once we get it filled in to kind of give a subtle indication of the light back here. But other than that, we're not going to go too, too much detail like the others will do. And then put a little bit of an atmospheric layer on it to really push it back. And the reason I wanted to do a desert scene today was because it's so cold out that <laughs> drawing this, it won't physically make me warm up, but just seeing something nice and warm might psychologically help. I know it's a weird thing, but it's just how my brain thought said we're drawing it today so ta-da so we're just gonna do a bit of a light blue thank you Tigger off the transparency and just put a nice subtle light layer on and I am doing it on the wrong side Because the light's coming from the left. They're fine. They just like to, um, Squeeta likes to play and Tigger does not like playing with her. And you would think after in her four years of living, Squeeta would have gotten the message by now, but she keeps trying. Maybe one day. Alright, then we're going to put a gradient layer. To have a bit of the atmosphere. Boop. There we go. <clears throat> also, alright. Time for the sand. Now the sand, I'm still trying to figure out color-wise, I think. Cause it's new. I don't want to do a yellow, maybe an orange. Maybe that.
Here we go. Alright. And then we're gonna add blend it so it will have the light to darkness. And same with saturation to, uh, desaturation to saturation. <laughs> so basically we're trying to give the illusion that this ground goes all the way back. It's just not flat and then we hit that wall. So let's do this will help create the illusion that this goes all the way back. And we'll probably add a bit of blue back there to help sell that. So we'll take a bit of this kind of blue. Now we gotta be careful because these are complementary colors. They might turn out to be a bit muddy. So we just gotta make sure that they don't muddy themselves up. Kind of keep them the nice colors they are. And it happens if you're just, if you're not careful when you blend it out, it might just become too dull, at least duller than you're looking. So. And it usually happens when you do complementary colors like green and red, purple and yellow, orange and blue. And I'm keeping that very, most of this blue not fully blended in, because it will help. That illusion. Now we're going to come do a reverse, so on this side we're going to make it a bit darker, excuse me, there we go. a bit more orange, and I didn't do a kind of the dull yellow that you usually see with sand, because it would be harder to fully see that blending in. I mean, fully see that transition. And it's not as fun if here in the Oasis, it's nice and vibrant. I mean, it's not nice and vibrant. Uh, words are hard. So we kind of blend this in here. And this isn't to be like, this is how the shadows are going to lay here. This is just how the base color of this sand is going to be in this area. And then we'll go on top with adding the shadows and everything else. So.
the shadow we'll come back to this ground layer in just a moment so let's go and get started on the oops, big rock all right That color. So we're trying to add some divots as I am outlining to kind of make it more rock like. Like so. Switch to the ink 
toothbrush. And some loose shadows. So where we have the divots, we are going to make those like the big cracks and the crevices. Trying to keep in mind that the light is coming from the left. So we want to make sure we are applying that when putting this all in. Put a shadow here. And some darker shadows in here are where there's just no light able to come in. Bit of blue to the side because this side is going to be facing the sky and away from the sun, so it's going to be the shadow blue. thinner strokes just make sure you are changing the size of your brush to be smaller it'll help you with that sort of control Just blending it. I don't know what I mean by this case.
So I might take a lighter with this color. So when the sun's coming in between this orange, give a bit of a lighter. Same on this side, we'll have some light coming through. To really help with that 3D look we're trying to go for. I saw Tiger. I saw. Tiger was getting some food. Squido was just watching her and then she turned around and Squido's right there and she didn't like that so she wanted to rat Squido out Just blending it, giving the rock formation some color change, a bit of dynamic look to it, some of the cracks. I'll add some more cracks in just a sec. Just trying to thank you, Tinker, for walking across the keyboard. I love you too. But I'll add some more cracks in just a second. This side is in shadow, so it's going to be mostly kind of a bluish tone.
probably have noticed by now if you have seen the other ones I've done, but I really like showing the brush strokes as a way to add texture. Um, it's just my way of doing it. There are some projects I worked on where I had to make it all nice and clean where I couldn't show the brush strokes. So, <laughs> that, that made me kind of upset because I was so used to doing it one way, but when people pay you to do it the way they want, you gotta do it that way. But it wasn't too bad. It was just a bit of mental correcting. Instead of just leaving it how I usually do it, making sure I do even up everything, make it nice and clean up with no brush strokes. Just adding a bit more light over here to indicate for the sun. Same for in here. And I might add a multiplier layer to really push the shadows here to give this formation a bit more form because right now it's not having that form to it. So, let's try to fix that. Without getting super, super muddy with the colors. So let's add those cracks. So kind of following a bit of what I have already painted. kind of emphasize that and I went for a really dark color so I can actually see I'll change the color after I get all this this is something that kind of Blends in to this a bit more, but if I had it as a close color to it, it would have been hard to see, so I wouldn't know 
what I have done already. Then on this side, make it a bit lighter. Oops, duplicate it. Go away. So can we pick the sky? Fill it in that, move it. Facing the sun, we'll make it a bit on the lighter side, sort of a blue color, and a bit lighter. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and put in shadow layer. need to be. Don't worry, we'll tone down <laughs> the intensity of this, um, just like we were doing with the crags, just to see where this all goes. Make sure we get everything covered where it needs to be covered. And then we'll tone it down. And then watch it drop the opacity to about 50. And hit this. a bit, not too much, probably 
of a sand over so it makes it look like it's somewhat buried in the sand so just take the sand color we have and kind of go over it a bit And then we'll get the cast shadow in just a sec. But let's go ahead and do the other rock over here. Excuse me. Slightly different color, but not too much. So a lot of this rock will be in shadow because the way the big one is casting a back shadow over this. Uh, the top part of this will be kind of light and a little bit of uh, here. And the edge of this rock will be in the light. Other than that, everything else will be in shadow. Only clean this just a sec. There we go. Perfect. Alright. So because a lot of it's gonna be in shadow, let me go ahead and darken just slight. And change it. It's so like this part will be in light, so we'll go ahead and lighten that up a bit. And it's going to kind of be diagonally affecting it. From here, we can say from here down is where more of the light will be. And about here is where that light will hit. It's just the same as it was for the other one. Just going in and adding the sky on this side. 
that side, the hair on the top of here. Thank you, Tigger. So I'm going to do all the rocks first, and then add in the plant life, and then the water, and then we'll do all the cast shadows. And normally I would have done the cast shadows as soon as I finished the structure, but I felt like switching up. Selection here. Thank you, Digger. Oops, still on the gradient. She couldn't make up her mind if she was gonna lay in her bed or not. Surprised how active they are considering the time. They normally sleep until I leave for work. Then they roam around. I don't mind. I like seeing them.
So we'll put the shadow in here. It's gonna kind of go something like this. Because this will be the cast shadowing of this big rock. Oops, too big. the sand. Hi, Tigger. What are you doing? Stop. Thank you, Tigger. Like I said, a little bit of the sand overlapping our rocks. Really? Is that it? You didn't want to say anything else? Okay. And then let's get the front row done. And if you're wondering why sometimes I do this and then fill it in, the other times I just color it in. It depends on how thick I make the outline. If it's thick enough for me to feed that through, then I'll do it. But it's then, in most cases I don't. I flip flop between the two. And then sometimes I forget I can do it, so... It's just my brain being my brain. So this one, all of it is in shadow. Maybe a peak of it or here will be showing a bit of light. But for the most part, you're in shadow over here. You're so cute, Tiger. So we're going to be working with a lot of the blue here.
And the reason why I'm not just doing light and shadow of this is the blue adds a bit more dynamic to me. And a bit more color of it, me just being this orange brown color. And something you actually see if you look outside, actually look at something you would see more up the sky in the blue color. What are you doing? Select it. That was weird. So, even though I don't paint hyperlistically, I try to make the lighting and the colors emulate how it would be in the real world. But with a little me twist <laughs> how I would go about it in my own way. So just a little bit of the light coming in here. <laughs> but not like how we were doing the other two. Like so. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's go ahead and do the palm trees. And then turn the smoothing on. So I can just do the whoop a doop whoop whoop. And boop. Then. And now. We'll put it behind the front rock there. Um, I'll probably add another tiny one coming in here. Yep. Turn 
the smoothing off. So for these ones, the shadows, for these two are fine, but for these guys, they're kind of going to be blocked by the rock, so a lot of it's going to be in shadow. This one is going to be the same old, same old. And this one would have a pink tone, but the leaves are going to be crossing that shadow. So, let's go ahead and add the leaves in. Actually, I want to make the leaves bigger. these two layers in a second but I just want to keep this outline 
So I can actually see the different um, petals. Since I didn't fully establish them in this sketch. I wonder if I'll have time to do it. I'm not talking about this one, but there was a piece I did back in college, and I was making into kind of a series of different things of making a puzzle world. So everything in the world was basically made out of several different puzzle pieces. Very time consuming to do, and it was hard to do um, a lot of the texture because the puzzle pieces are typically flat and shiny. So, it was a fun idea I had back then. I wonder if I could do something similar. I don't know, I have a lot of fun ideas I want to try out and do. It's just finding the time, you know? Um, I have a few NDA projects I currently working on and day job. So, I'll eventually get them. I have my little whiteboard full of all the ideas I want to try out. Alright, so let's add some shading. So when it comes to leaves, they usually have, you know, that sort of line that's defined where everything on this side is... Let me actually merge those. There we go. So everything on that side is in shadow, and then this side is in light, and in the center and that light kind of hits. There we go. And then of course we have our little detail lines. That's not right. I mean, yes, the detail lines, but I was doing them wrong. There we go.
So we're gonna kind of keep that line right there. And the rest of that's in shadow. I'll fix that line in just a second. But same for right here.
and then we'll add like hatch shadows of the leaves onto the branch. I mean trunk of the tree. And then we're going to darken some of these leaves a bit. Like so. Time for the cactus. Now, when I'm doing these cacti, I don't 
do much in terms of shading. I'll shade them like a sphere. Then I'll add their little details for where the pokes come from. Their thorns or whatever you like to call them. Where they prick you. And that's about it. I'll change the color of some of these so they're not all the same value green. So the ones closest in the shadow will be darker. And then ones in the sun will be lighter. You get it. Oops. So I just do that, which I need to be slightly darker.
通。Just two little pokes. I try to keep them on the line. Sometimes they don't always stay on the line. That's okay. I just use it as a bit of a guide. On top of these guys, so I'm gonna do a nice pink color, <laughs> and we're just gonna do whoop, whoop. pretty simple flowers. Change some of these colors, flowers to a different color to give a bit more variety. But for right now, we're just gonna plop them all in. Some of these two. Let's go with a purple color. So just change a few of them. Alright. And a bit of their centers. this so some of them are open and some of them are closed so for the closed ones we're just going to do a bit of a darker shadow to show that they're closed versions like so. Like that. And of 
course, we have, we're going to put that all in a group. And then put the ones in shadow, in shadow. So these are to do it as a group. That way you don't have to worry about if case you can just do it all at once. So you can put these little guys in shadow. Now you don't have to worry about making sure all the colors are right. You got all the base done. So, oh, there we go. Now it's time for the water. Um, So water takes in a lot of the color that's around it. Let me actually fix this real quick. That doesn't look right. Ugh.
Why? Sorry, if it's, it will bug me if it's not correct, or at least close to being right. Because basically, every time it turns and moves like that, there's a tree like there's an ellipse there, and an ellipse as it goes back in perspective flattens out. So. I thought I could fix it without having to restart, but sometimes you just have to restart, and that's okay. Because you can learn from what you went wrong. Alright, now <laughs> it reflects the colors around it. So you're just gonna kind of blend these colors. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and you probably know I use this ink to brush to a lot of blending just because at least the texture that I like
me collections. Oops. And then, as we're adding the cast shadows, the sand where it touches the water, we're gonna add a subtle shadow to show that this is a pile of sand. It just adds a little bit of details. Water break. So, right where the water hits here, I have a bit of where that water would break. I was kind of tempted to put lily pads here, but I think we're good on plants for right now. I might change my mind. But I think I'll just leave the water kind of bare for right now. Just going in, adding the cast kind of shadows for where they connect here. So even in shadow, they're gonna have a bit of a cast kind of shadow just because they are still touching something, so this helps ground them. And shadows help tell the direction of the sun or the light source. Ta -da. Another nice way to help you communicate to people 
Where are your noise sources coming from? I'm going to do them on the same layer. And then we'll duplicate this layer and clip it to the water layer. I'm going to recolor that sand because we have that shadow, so I just need to make sure it blends in and doesn't look like we missed something. And then this gas shadow, duplicate, bring it up to the river and clip it to the river. And then we just need to clean it up. it slightly because it's hitting a different plane so when the shadows hit a different plane it changes its direction slightly So like that. <laughs> Clean up. And I'll add a bit of an atmospheric layer behind. The rock. And we'll do the same thing, clip it to the water layer so it connects. But this will help push 
things back a bit. There we go. Copy. Bring it up. Clip it to the waterline. So that way it matches. And we need to kind of clean it up a bit. Same with the other one. Keep it kind of behind the rock layer. Lower the opacity a bit. Like that. Yeah. So that will be it for this one today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. If there's something you want to see drawn in the future, let me know. I always like getting new ideas and everything from people. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.